Hey, this is YBR with Beam and G Drive, and today we're going to be taking a look at a mod that adds the Bruckle Legrand drag version to the game. And the description here says the drag version has a supercharged V6 and drag slicks, giving it enough power and grip to lift the rear wheels in reverse. You know we gotta try this out, so we're gonna just go ahead and make sure we got some room behind us. So that looks pretty good. Yeah, we got some room. Put the parking brake on and then reverse go. <laughs> Yep, it lifts the uh, rear up. Oh, no, I can't stop. Oops. Uh, does it still drive? Yeah, yeah, it still drives. Th this is perfectly fine. Oh, my goodness. It still drives. We're up to 150 miles per hour with a car that looks like this. I've never seen a car this beat up looking drive this fast. Oops. And now it's not going to drive anymore. Because that's ruining everything. The front wheel just fell off right there. But that was an amazing drive while it lasted, wasn't it? We can take a quick look at the damage before we reset the car back to where we were. So you've now seen how fast the car is when it's damaged, but how fast is it when it's fully functional? Actually about the same. It was doing really well for how beat up it was. The only difference is we have a little bit more control over the vehicle. I do say a little bit. Like, we can get through this section right here, but we're going to be going 220 miles per hour. This thing is not stable. When I try to go around these corners, we're probably going to roll over. Yep. Called it. Called it. Now we're just going to tumble and tumble and tumble until we come to a stop. Although I kind of want to do it again, but this time we hit head on at like 200 miles per hour into something. That sounds really fun to do. So somehow the engine revs up. There's a look at the damage and you see a tire kind of bouncing in the background. I want to be going at least 200 miles per hour for this impact. And anything more than 200 is just bonus. I'm going to try to maybe get 220 even if we can, but I don't know. I got to find a good spot to crash. I know there's some rocks in the middle of the road that might work. So we're going about 220 right here, and then let's see if we can get those rocks in the middle. Head on! Wow. The whole front of the car completely disintegrated, and then it caught fire in a bunch of places. That was a great crash. That killed the engine. And I got to test something really dumb. What would happen if you took this thing off-roading? Because there's a dirt road right there that would be perfect for this. So we're going to real carefully go on to the road, and then floor it! Oh yeah, it can still accelerate here. No problem there. Can it slow down enough? Yes, it can. Because we gotta go around these corners super slowly because this thing is a very, very unstable and the dirt makes it even worse. When we're on those straights, we're gonna floor it and go 100 like miles per hour through there. That is way too fast and unsafe of a speed. I don't know what I'm thinking right there. So this is a safe speed, but it's also not really making use of the car's max power. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna floor it until we crash. Uh, oh, the water really just made us stop. All right, flooring it still, though. And there's a flip, and wow. Like, the car just folded in half right there when it hit the tree. That is impressive how it did that. I want to get that out of the tree so you can actually see it. So the best way to do that is to save it, reset it, and then reload it. And look at that fold. Oh, my goodness. That is crazy. All right, so we'll actually reset the car, and now that we know how it does that, I have another dumb idea. I want to pop it in the air and let it fly because it has enough speed to easily fly. I just got to find the right spot to fly from. So it looks like right here is usually a pretty good spot, isn't it? Yes. Fly. Fly. Whoo! Wow. That was a spin. And of course, there's nothing that's going to be functional after that, but we'll take a look at the damage before we reset it. Okay, so at this point, I think we've had enough fun with the vehicle, so now we can actually talk about what's going on here. So as I said earlier, it has a supercharged V6 engine, and then it has some fat drag tires in the front. And then on the rear, we got some bicycle tires. It is a really wacky setup. It has a special transmission setup that is ideal for drag racing, and I just had a really dumb idea. What happens if I floor it right here in reverse? Woo! Oh my goodness. It actually made it up the hill. Now it's gonna... Well, I'm just gonna keep flooring in reverse. Never mind, a tire fell off. I think the other one's about to fall off too. Okay, you know what I want to do actually? I want to do a drag race. So I'm gonna go to a nice wide open map like Special Stage Route B and uh, do a drag race there. And for this drag race, obviously we're gonna want a Bruckel Legrand Drag Edition because it would be dumb to race other cars in this video for a review for that. And then the competition. Let's go with a Burnside Special. It's a little bit slower than the other drag cars, but it has the same 1500 horsepower engine setup. So it should be a pretty good race, I'm thinking. So we're going to freeze physics and just floor it for both of them. It's a nice, simple launch here. And it looks like the Legrand isn't doing so well at the start, although this one's going way to the side as well. i got to straighten both of these cars out. Driving two cars at once ain't easy, but 
The Legrand is pulling ahead. Burnside Special is topped out. This is going 220 miles per hour. Now, let's check. Are we in front of them? Yes, we are. I can tell because I didn't hit them. I actually flew in front of them. I was hoping I would hit them a little bit, but can't always get what you want. We'll let this thing go ahead and slide for a little bit before we reset it. All right, it's lost most of its momentum now, so let's reset it. Grab the other one, reset it, and then we're going to swap it. We're going to go with the drag version of the Brockel Moonhawk, which, like I said earlier, is a little bit faster, and I think it tops out a little bit higher, too, so this should be an interesting race. So same strategy as before, we just floored for both of them, and off we go. Oh, this one's all going way to the side. I gotta try to straighten this thing out without overcorrecting. There we go. So launch is way harder than me, unfortunately. And it looks like in terms of top speed, we might be close. Like, I'm about topped out, but I'm not gaining on them, so they're probably topped out too, but they're overheating. I'm not. Hypothetically, I could do this longer than them, but this thing is not the easiest to control at these speeds. You just see me sliding all over the place. And I'm not really gaining on them, and they're not overheating fast enough, so... At this point, I'm just kind of curious, how good can we wreck this thing at 230 miles per hour? Wait, are they hitting the wall where we might catch up to them? Nah, let's just go ahead and wreck this thing. We're going to turn hard right here. And there we go, we rolled it. And we rolled it again. It's upright? Nope, it's upside down again. All the tires are attached, though. Never mind, one of them just fell off. And that's... He's going to do it for the drag races. Now I know which car is faster than which. So we're going to go ahead and change maps. Look at the tire just bouncing in the background there. Actually, I'm curious. Is it going to make it all the way to the water? Will it? Will it? Oh, oh okay. So uh, we're going to go ahead and go over to Rochi Raceway and try to do a lap with this thing just because I can. And I just had a really dumb idea. We probably could have did it on the other map, but I didn't think about it until right now. So you saw, the Legrand does not launch as hard as the Moonhawk. But what if... We could get the Legrand to launch a little bit harder because front wheel drive cars don't usually launch too well because when you accelerate hard, the weight of the car shifts to the rear a little bit. So you can see this right here. We're accelerating really hard. The rear end dips down and the rear wheels aren't doing anything. It's all about the front wheels. And with less weight on the front wheels, you have a little bit of wheel spin as you're seeing right there. But with this car, as you saw earlier, it actually can go in reverse pretty well. And with reverse, it's the exact opposite story because when you hit it like this, the weight shifts to that front tire. It gets extra traction from the extra weight and it actually launches so hard it picks up the whole car from the ground now it might actually be launching a little bit harder when you do that or it might not be i don't know that's what we're gonna go ahead and test don't crash on me Woo! oh scary all right i want to bring this thing up a little bit though so we are near the starting line on the straightish part of the road so like right about there would work it looks like we could uh, stop it here and then we're going to save this spot and get another Legrand out and put it side by side with this one. And we want to see if it's actually faster to launch in reverse. Now, you know, quarter mile time, it wouldn't be faster because you're going to top out at like 80 miles per hour. But, you know, for the first 1 20th of a mile or whatever, it might be faster. And right there, I actually broke the wheel axle. I don't know how I managed to do that, but it's broken. And there's even some fender damage there. That's weird. <laughs> we'll clean up the car so it'll actually drive so we can line it up properly. And then carefully drive it to the starting line. All right, so that's about lined up with the other car, I would say. So we save the spot. And then we're going to do the same thing we did before. We freeze physics and launch both cars. So launching this one in reverse, this one in forward. We're even going to get a little slow-mo so we can really watch this thing. They are not lined up in the same direction, but hopefully it'll work out okay. So go. And ooh. So it looks like, wait a minute. No, look. It is launching harder now. Except when it gets in the air a little bit, that does slow it down. But the initial launch is definitely harder. Ha! See, now we're at about the top speed of the reverse transmission. So, of course, it's going to overtake it. But that was really surprising to me. Like, it was one of those things where I think hypothetically it worked, but I didn't know if it actually would. So, now that we see that it launches harder, I got to know. If we put it side by side with a Moonhawk, would it be a little bit closer at the start? Because the other one, the Moonhawk just pulled away immediately. I'm going to line this up a little bit different because I noticed it hit the wall. So maybe like right there might be a little bit better as long as it doesn't hit the soon to be Moonhawk. So we're going to grab, well, let's do the Barstow. It's just as fast as the Moonhawk, but it looks a little bit cooler. It's like a red and orange versus an orange and orange. It's like, yeah, two of the same color. Ugh. And it looks like that alignment will be okay because I think usually these drag cars pull a little bit to the left. So slow-mo, freeze physics, accelerate, reverse, and go. That thing still just gets off the line so fast. I mean, it's close, but not quite. 
It's closer than before, for sure, though. I wonder if I'm just accelerating a little bit too hard in reverse and I lift the wheels up if that's slowing it down a little bit more, but I'm not going to do that in-depth of testing with this. Instead, we'll just roll it over and rip it to pieces. Then we'll actually try to do a lap like I was planning to do initially, so we'll reset it and then we'll try doing a lap in reverse since we're already pointed that way because I don't trust this thing to do a simple 180 here. So we can go fast on the straights and then slam on the brakes, slam on the brakes, and try not to roll. I mean, the suspension on this thing is so scary in the corners. You don't want to be going around a corner with this thing, but if you have to, this is what it looks like. And you notice I'm trying to keep it as straight as possible through that section so I don't actually have to steer much. All right, this is actually working surprisingly well. It looks like when you slam on the brakes, it actually helps the stability a little bit when all the weight distributes to the front like that. So like, you slam on the brakes and you go around a corner, it works pretty good, but if you let up on the brakes, you might slide a little bit like I did right there. Like driving this thing is very, very tricky. Anyways, up, accelerate, and then slam on the brakes, slam on the brakes, slam on the brakes, 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 yes, okay. Then we let it coast for a second, and beautiful. This is actually working a lot better than I expected, considering I could easily tip this thing over at any time if I wanted to. All right, I I'm gonna complete a lap. I'm gonna complete a lap with this. I did not expect to be able to complete a lap. No, 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 no. Oh, see? See, I told you it was really easy to flip it. <laughs> oh, well. I tried, and that'll do it for this video. Till next time, this has been YBR. I'll see ya.